Greetings, Blue Chessers! I am Arena Grandmaster Gavin Ong, and today I'll be reviewing the recent Netflix hit, The Queen's Gambit, from a chess player's perspective. Before I continue, a spoiler alert is in motion as I will be revealing information on the plot, stories, characters, and etc. For my initial review, I'd just like to say that I really love the series. Not only because it's chess, but I love vintage. I like how the director set the scene by creating this world that Beth lived in, which is from the 1940s to 60s. I actually love the, mi- the minute details like the, the cars, the, the technology, you know, the interiors, the fashion, the culture, the songs especially, which I have shazammed and kept in my playlist, if you guys are wondering. And all those minute details really help convey the message that the series wants to send out. To everyone out there. So for that, kudos to the director and kudos to who, who, who wrote the book. I forgot the author's name. But yeah, the Netflix show was really wonderful. So if you guys are wondering, moving on to the more chess side of this review, I'd like to say that there has never been a woman who has become world champion in chess. There's really a difference, you know, between um, men and women. Aside, away from the common, the common understanding that people are saying, oh, it's just chess, it's not a physical sport, so men and women should be pretty equal, right? However, I'd like to debunk that now and say that's not true. I'm not saying this because it's my opinion, but I'm basing this off the fact that the world champion over the, over the history of chess, ever since, ever since it was um, invented, has always been men. So the current world champion right now, if you guys are wondering, is Magnus Carlsen with a classical rating of over 2,800 compared to the women's world champion right now who is Wen Jun Ji from China who has a classical rating of over 2,600. Although they're both grandmasters, the difference is pretty huge. It's pretty obvious. Don't get me wrong though. I know that there are a lot of controversies going around gender sensitivity and all that thing. But as part, as, as part of my review, I'd like to share facts and the context of how chess was in the past and is until today. So don't get me wrong, there are a lot of great men and women players out there and it's not the nature of the sport that created this, created this disparity between genders. Now, Judith Polgar was one of the few chess players who has beaten Garry Kasparov, the former world champion, at the time just like what Beth did with Borgov. But none, no woman has ever become the world champion. Um, I'm just really amazed at how the character of Beth Harmon sends a deep message to everyone who aspires to not let the norm pull them down from achieving what they want. You know. So, Mr. Scheibel and the announcer at the last game of Beth with Borgov, if you guys remember the time when the announcer was like, Beth Harmon should take the draw because it's going to be a huge deal for her if she drew the world champion, you know, that kind of thing. It was a, it was a tempting option. But yet, Beth didn't take it. And that decision that Beth took by not taking the, the, the draw offer by Borgov she just shows how she's willing to go against the norm and what society tells her, what society pushes her to that, to that direction. Both of these examples show people how, our, how the world can influence you to succumb to become part of the norm. You know, there are norms that we, that we follow every day. And, this, and Beth Harmon was a perfect example of how to go against it. And Beth shows us that anyone can play chess. It's not only a sport for the mentally gifted people. So in case you guys are wondering, I'm also offering lessons. So if you guys are interested to learn chess, I'm happy to teach, teach the sport to you and teach you the secrets of the board. So just send a message to me. Anyway, moving on. One of the lines that really struck me the most was when Beth asked the Russian kid when they played against each other, what's next after you become world champion? And this question was really, really, it really struck me because it, it shows you what, what everyone wants out of the game. You know, chess is just, it's not just chess. People play chess because they want something out of it. They want to achieve something out of it. And what is that? Honestly, I success is, a very, is very arbitrary in nature. 
and one can and feel successful even if they don't reach the goal they intended for at first and it's a strange phenomena you know sometimes you you want this but eventually after the whole journey you you realize that you want something else instead and it's a completely normal feeling and completely normal occurrence in a lot of sports you know like maybe in basketball you want you want to become an nba player but of course for a lot of filipinos that dream is a bit hard a bit far to achieve so what else can you achieve in terms of your goal and that success is not only measured by what you have achieved but the process you you've underwent to to achieve that certain something you know the same goes for me um i recently achieved my arena grandmaster title last may and i still feel the urge to push forward and perhaps earn myself an over the board fide title so if you guys are wondering fide is the international chess federation you know i also see myself coaching someday perhaps but for me ultimately i see chess as my vocation to god and i believe that one of the reasons that beth and i push forward in the game of chess is the fact that chess brings us a lot of mystery just like any adventure out there we don't know how far it'll take us but we are surely enjoying the ride so based on the show i can really see that beth doesn't know what she wants you know at first she was like oh i want to learn chess i want to beat you but what is the ultimate goal that she wants to achieve and i think that's a very philosophical question that you should answer what do you want to achieve by doing this certain something let's say for example playing chess beth was able to beat borgov and i think in the end of the the series it seemed like it was the end already and she was satisfied with it but what's next you know she did she she's not the world champion she just beat the world champion but what's going to happen after that and that's for beth to decide and honestly it's normal for people to not be able to to see what they want and what they want to what they want to achieve in the future although the journey that that they will undergo will take them there and eventually when you've achieved something you'll realize that oh this is what i wanted all along and not the one that i initially i i initially planned for so that's what one of the beautiful things that i i learned most about the series and more on what beth um showed us during her entire ordeal those seven episodes ago regarding the obsession side of the game you know um the drugs the the wine the smoking and all those things honestly i think chess is an obsession and obsession goes a long way and i can relate a lot to beth's life although i don't do any vices i share the same love and passion for the game as her You know, instead of the ceiling like you've seen in the first few episodes and towards the end where she sees the pieces flying up in her ceiling moving like in her mind when i was a kid i have to admit i see chess pieces moving on the floor because back in my back when i was younger our school had had flooring that was that were shaped shaped like tiles so when i see squares on the floor i tend to like oh a knight can go here and a bishop can go here all that sort of thing so i can relate to that to a certain degree of course not like hers and whenever i get the chance i have free time i either play or study chess it's uh, almost like a, a full time gig for me um similar to beth um i love studying chess i love playing chess i love practicing i love reading it's just i think it has consumed me the same way it consumed beth But of course, I'm not making it um, the priority in my life. Chess was a majority of my high school and college, and I don't regret it one bit. You know, others may see me as a fool, like saying, "Why did you spend so much time on this board, slab of board, this wooden board with pieces?" But I believe otherwise, and you will only understand the obsession and the the effort that you will pour in. If if you're just as as immersed as in the game as I am, so yes, I am very proud to say I am obsessed with chess, and I have some friends who are a lot like Harry Beltic, who decided that they don't love chess, and that's fine, you know. Chess is definitely not for everyone, but for those who really love the game so much, the obsession is real, guys. The obsession is real, and you can really feel that the game influences you in a lot of aspects of your life. Not only over the board or in a tournament, but even outside, you know. 
diving more into the sport, the series portrayed something I believe was unrealistic. I learned chess 11 years ago, and progress in the game is not as easy as the series showed it. Progress, so you see that Beth, pro- like I was surprised to see Beth progressing super fast in the series. Like in the first episode alone, she was like what nine, eight years old, and she beat Mr. Scheibel so fast. And I was like, how can you improve that fast? It took me freaking 11 years to to do something substantial, and yet Beth, it took her like one episode and a couple of months just to be able to see all those, right? But. Honestly, the first thing I learned when I studied chess was actually the four-move checkmate against my dad. So if you guys are wondering, it's my dad who taught me how to play. And when he beat me over and over again, I got so tired. I was like, okay, let me find something that I can refute refute him with. Then I found the four-move checkmate by myself. I was looking at the board, staring at it, and I was like, which among the pawns in the opponent's side is only guarded by the king? I noticed the f7 pawn for black. I mean, if you're playing as white, and you're planning to four move checkmate your opponent. The f7 pawn is the 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 only pawn where the king is guarding it. There's no other piece guarding that square. So I was like, this is where I want to attack. So I, I tried the scholar's mate against my dad and it worked, you know. So I, I really relate a lot to to Beth when he f- scholar when she got scholar mated by um, by Mr. Scheibel. But m- more like to some to some degree like you know Beth improved really really fast something to the point that it was unrealistic already Um, and it also I think it downgrades the aspect of how chess is a commitment and like every commitment it needs a lot of time effort and dedication for you to become good at it no one can master chess that's a fact you know but one can be a chess master feel that the series did not give justice to this process. The process of improving, the process of studying, the process of failure, the process of everything. The journey that takes you to where to your chess success. The journey is the very important part. I don't think it's the end. I think it's more of the journey. And the series kind of like just sped through it like that. Chess is not an easy thing to learn. Guys, so if for those who are studying law, who are planning to go into law, chess is a lot like that. You know, it's not only studying about about the moves. It's also studying different games, classical games. You need to you need to see how the previous masters beat their opponents. You need to see their styles, their their positions, their their thought processes, and all those things. And on top of that, you need to study your tactics. You need to study your own games. You need to do all these things, you know. It takes a lot of patience and a lot of time, effort, and all these things. And I think the series tend, ten, da, te, um, like kind of downgraded that aspect of it. And that's not something that I like. But of course, if you're limited to seven episodes, then pretty much that's what you're limited to, right? So that's just my thoughts on it. But what makes every success fulfilling is knowing the fact that you endured the process and worked hard for it. Beth, you know, if you've watched the games, she plays like a heartless computer with the mind of a human. So you see her moves, they're all perfect. Like, you saw the time when she was like saying, did you see the mate in three, the mate in like that? She co- she calculates everything so fast. And I don't think, I mean, there are people like Nakamura who are able to do that. But at the same time, she plays like a heartless computer engine. You know, she doesn't have emotion when she plays. But that's, that's the hard part about chess. If you're a human, you're, you always have emotions and psycholo- psychology with you. You know, your mental health with you, your emotions with you. You're carrying your emotions wherever you go. And when Beth plays chess, she's emotionless. And that's one of the things that I find very unrealistic about the show. And it doesn't show what real-life chess is all about. Real-life playing is all about. So moving on to my point about psychology, chess is a very psychological sport, guys. Now, people don't often see this because it is an abstract concept that manifests itself unnoticeably on the board. You can tell a person's temperament just by seeing how he or she plays during a game or tournament. You can tell if someone's in a good mood, maybe if he or she loves to attack, 
You can tell if someone's depressed if he or she is not concentrating and falls for tactics. All those, all these things, right? Clearly, Beth has some personal issues to deal with, just like every chess player. And that's what makes the game of chess so beautiful. It's the fact that it's not only about moving pieces. It's also about seeing through the other person's personality, psychology, emotions, and all these things. Normally, you'd see chess, you know, normally you'd see some stunning combination. When a player sacrifices a queen, you watch Agat Bater's channel, you see beautiful games on, on, on Facebook or YouTube or all these other media platforms, you're like, wow, this grandmaster played them such a beautiful combination. And delivers probably even a beautiful checkmate. You know, like Immortal Games. You've heard of Immortal Games, right? But people, you know, even some amateur chess players rarely see the extra layer, the deeper layer, or the story beneath the combination. For example, in my, in my, in my experience, I have an Immortal game. I won't drop a name of my opponent or the game I played, but maybe perhaps I was in such a good mood then. Or, because I'll tell you the story of the context. So, in the first round, since our UAAP is double round robin, um, I'm playing for Ate- I played for Ateneo, by the way, in the Philippines. And when we played this school, I won't drop the, the name of the school, we lost 0.5 to 3.5. That was a that was a heart heartbreaker. Imagine out of the four boards, um, we lost three and drew one. It was so painful, honestly. And I was telling my teammates, "I'm so sorry, I lost." And it wasn't it wasn't even a, a game worth fighting. You know, I lost badly, and it really gave me such a huge pain in the heart because I thought that I could have done something better. It always happens when you play. So I told my teammates, it's time for redemption. I, I was telling them over a chat that this is time for us to come back. And I, I feel the rage, all the all the rage inside of me. All the all the what's this what's the right word for it? All the all the emotions inside of me raging me, telling me, you need to win the next game. You need to win the next time you see him again, my opponent again. And true enough, when I played them the second time, that's when my my immortal game came. We, de- we destroyed that team, 3.5, 2.5. We reversed the score, flipped it over. So we were like, that's redemption. That's, that's redemption. And that's what the, my rage and my, my passion brought, brought me. You know? But if I have that game annotated somewhere in a chess history book somewhere, the, the, the commentator of my game might probably just say, oh, this is a beautiful combination played by Gavin. And beat his opponent in this school, blah 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 blah. But people rarely see that there is an aspect behind it. Of course, that commentator will not know the whole story behind it. That player will not know that I, I was full of rage then, that I was sad, that I was um, telling my teammates that this is my redemption, this is my promise to you. All the times that I've, I've endured that kind of pain, talked it over with my teammates, the commentator will not see that. They'll only show you the game for what it is. So I think that's what one of the game, the things that this series is pointing out. It's because it's not only a show, but you see the different aspects of Beth's life that makes her into that player, the player that she is. You know, it shows her, it shows the audience why Beth is playing like that. Why is she so good? And you know the reason why she is so good. She said because she can control everything. She can see everything on the board, and it makes her feel powerful. And that, I think that desire for power is what pushes Beth to play really well. That's from a chess player's perspective and what I see and what I relate to. You know? And I think, yeah, so with this, I'd like to say that chess is not merely a 2D game. It's, it's three-dimensional and it's all over the place, not only in the board but outside of it as well. So, as I want to end my review, I'd like to say a couple of words about the game of chess. And I hope I can change the stigma of how people see the game overall. I hear how people compare chess to other board games like checkers. And for me, to be honest, it's such an insult. Because chess has so many secrets 
and compared to other games and you can only see them once you immerse yourself into the game and that's what happened to Beth once you're able to look past what everyone else sees then your eyes will be opened and you will be able to see the game as not just any other but none like the others so with that guys um, I hope I, I was able to share some perspective on the show and if you guys have any questions about the show or anything you'd like to ask me in particular, feel free to drop a comment or send me a message on my page, The Blue Chesser by AGM Gavino. So with that, thank you and peace.